In today's video, we're going to talk about the National Trust, its rules on photographers, its rules on drones, and how is it possible that the National Trust have managed to enshrine some of these rules into law. And I think the biggest hurdle we have to get over to start to understand that is by the understanding of what the National Trust is and what the National Trust isn't. The National Trust is the largest private landowner in England, Wales and Northern Ireland and it owns or leases around a thousand square miles of farmland and around 780 miles of coastline. Within its property portfolio it owns 24%, 24% wow that's a lot, of the Lake District National Park and is the largest private landowner in the Peak District National Park. It's registered as a charity and it's those charitable aims that are concerned with the environment, conservation and heritage and their aim is to help the general public that's their charitable aim is to help the general public by providing buildings facilities and open space through England Wales and Northern Ireland now just to say for the scope of this video we are not talking about the National Trust for Scotland um, in fact we're not talking about Scotland at all in this video because it's got a the National Trust in Scotland is a different legal entity and has a much more open and relaxed view towards photographers so for this one we are covering England, Wales and Northern Ireland and the National Trust. And talk about legal entity, the legal entity of the National Trust is the National Trust of Historic Interest and Natural Beauty. And that legal entity is completely independent from government and is a private entity, it's an incorporated company. And it is that legal entity, it's that incorporated company that buys up or is gifted the land and so it owns the land as this private legal entity, independent from government. And as part of that ownership, they put contracts into place that we, the general public, or more to the point, photographers and drone flyers, enter into when we go onto their land. This is a sign that implies you are signing up to a contract. It advises you that you're welcome to enter onto the land in respect of the bylaws on the rear of the sign. And by entering past these points, you're accepting these terms. And the bylaw that relates to photography is bylaw number 17 about hawking. And bylaw 17 states that no person shall, for the purpose of trade or reward, take any photograph. And this is the bylaw that the National Trust takes all of its rules and regulations around photography from. This is what they link it back to. And this is what they say gives them the power to put into place all of their rules around photography. And one of their rules is this, the photographic access statement. The National Trust welcomes visitors and members to take photos for personal use for free. This includes for your own enjoyment and sharing with family and friends. Unfortunately, it does not include the selling or distributing, and with distributing, that does include some use for social media as well, of images in any way for publication or print, and so using images in this way would be in breach of the National Trust policies and bylaw. Uh, they then go on to further clarify some of these points in their next statement. Visitors are entitled to post their photographs of National Trust places on their personal social media account as it falls within our definition of personal use. However, this does not include business accounts or influencers. If influencers are paid for or gifted social media content, uh, must pre-book through the filming and locations office now for those of you who don't know what gifted social media content is it's where you've received a product and that's called a gift um, and you are in return for that gift filming some kind of review or promotion for it and um, that is classed as gifted social media content and therefore it is receiving um, for trade or reward uh, and then falls under that hawking bylaw that we mentioned before and open access land uh, in relation to crow applies here as well those who wish to take views of our open access land such as landscapes and coastlines for editorial publication or photographic competitions are free to do so however commercial use modeling or making consumer product products such as prints calendars etc need to apply for a permit now there might be some of you out there who go hang on this Croat, that gives us certain rights, doesn't it? Let's take a look at that. 
So the right to access land was given to us um, under the Countryside Right of Way Act of 2000. This gives us a right to access certain types of land, common land, public rights of way, etc. But it isn't as wide open as many of us would tend to believe. In fact, there's a list of restrictions of what we can't do on the land. And that's really important in terms of the National Trust. So the list of general restrictions limits what people can do unless they are given permission by the landowner, which in this case would be the National Trust. And these restrictions do include commercially filming, photographing or making maps or disturb livestock or intentionally disrupt habitats. And that's important, especially when we consider drone flying. Now there's loads of property owners putting in blanket bans on drone flying over their land and like me who's done you know the drone code got the license you may be under the impression that the caa regulate the airspace above land and that all that a landowner can determine is whether we take off our land from their land so how do these private companies get away with saying total ban on drone flying. Section 76 of the Civil Aviation Act of 1982 states that there are two measures for airspace above land or property. These are called the lower stratum and the higher stratum. In this it states that the lower stratum can interfere with a landowner's reasonable enjoyment of the land and the structures upon it and that it's unlikely to extend beyond a height of 500 to 1000 feet above roof level and this should roughly be the minimum permissible distance for no normal overflying by any aircraft. Now the problem for us drone flyers, as you'll know, is that there is a ceiling for drone flight. And that falls in this lower stratum because the ceiling is 400 feet. Whilst this hasn't been tested in court as of yet, not that I could find a record of anyway. Please let us all know down below if you do know of a testing court for this. It would seem that under that 500 feet height does come under the lower stratum and therefore the ownership of the private landowner down below. They have the ability, whether we like it or not, and whether it's followed or not, but they have the ability to at least put that ban into place, it would seem. Now the National Trust have things called bylaws and they use these bylaws because they're a legal act and therefore these become a thing of law. And in relation to drone flying, they're using bylaw 11A and B. No unauthorized person, bylaw 11A section three, shall ride or drive any conveyance over or upon trust property otherwise than upon roads, tracks and waterways authorised by use for such a conveyance. And in 11b, no person shall ride or drive any conveyance to the danger or annoyance of or without due consideration for other persons resorting to trust property. So those are the bylaws. They have their rules and they have their bylaws. So what does this mean? What happens if we break a rule? What happens if we break a bylaw? Now this is the point which um, I actually got a lot of flack for in, uh, in my last video for saying this isn't legal advice. So I'm just going to make this really clear. This isn't legal advice because I'm not talking directly about you and a specific incident that's happened to you. I'm giving you an overview of publicly available information appertaining to this particular subject. So whilst these laws and rules exist from the National Trust, it's also really important to know that nobody from the National Trust can pressure you into giving or personal information. They can by all means come over and have a chat with you, but you are under no legally bound contract to inform them who you are or what you're doing and why. Have a nice conversation and generally you're not really gonna find yourself on the wrong arm of the law. But bylaws are laws and can be broken and heard in court. So there is the risk of that. But it is interesting to note that the National Trust, from all of the research that I've done on photographers who have been caught out by them, seem to go after those photographers who are tagging them on social media posts from business accounts, advertising and keywording National Trust, uh, listing their photos on uh, stock agencies. There's even the report of the wedding photographer who gave her clients their wedding day photos. The couple themselves went out and posted them onto their social media and tagged the National Trust in them. The National Trust got in touch with the couple 
and this is pretty underhand, got in touch with a couple and asked them which photographer it was as they wanted to get in touch with them. So of course they handed over the details and then the National Trust sent them a lovely legal letter telling them that they needed a permit for each and every photo that they'd taken. And that was gonna cost hundreds. But here's the thing, when the National Trust do send these um, letters from their legal arm, they do offer a after the fact permit, which I believe is somewhere in the region of 50 pounds per image. And what's really interesting about that is their bylaws, so this contract that we enter into, we're going onto their land, uh, the penalty in monetary terms for the breaking of a bylaw is uh, no more than 20 pounds. Now, of course, from public land, even if you are only that far onto public land, you can take whatever you want. None of this, of course, overrides our freedom of panorama, which is something we're discussing in this video here and the fantastic rights we have as a photographer. Leave some comments down below on what you think. I've been Dave and this has been Let's Click Photography and I'll see you guys on the next one pretty damn soon.